Today we have pepper wood. I turned the other half of this log about a year ago and you may have seen it in a recent video where I had it all in glue clamps. That's because when I took it out of the box all of the bark fell off but all in one piece so it was easy to glue back on. It's all hardened up ready to go and today we're going to turn it. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening or as we like to say here at Shady Acres Woodshop. Howdy, let's take a closer look at it. The piece is eight by seven by three inches thick. You can see I've drilled a hole for my chuck jaws to set against and a hole in the middle of that for my woodworm screw. We're going to get it mounted up on the lathe and turn it in just a second here. I, I, I watched the video of the previous piece of this that I turned, the other half of this piece, and I just turned an ordinary bowl shape and that's because when you're dealing with a half log you're kind of locked into that. There's not a whole lot you can do if you're trying to preserve the bark and this has that beautiful orange bark. But what we're going to do different from that one, on that I used feed and wax for a finish and this time we're going to use a sanding sealer and shellac. So we'll see if this one shines a little more than that one did. That was a nice looking bowl, but it wasn't very shiny because feed and wax is not shiny. But uh, we'll see what this one looks like just a little bit shinier. So let's get over here to the lathe and get it mounted up. I typically drill a 5 16 inch hole for my 3 8 inch woodworm screw, but this wood's pretty soft, so I drilled it 1 64th smaller than that. I'm kind of thinking I probably should have maybe gone a 30 second smaller. No, 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 that's going to hold just real good. And of course we'll use tailstock support for a while. And I think I'm going to work on this corner from the top side down so that I don't pull that bark off. So we'll set the tool rest at about a 45 degree angle for that. And then let's see what kind of speed we can get here. Well, 900 RPM. I guess it's really in balance. Good job, Phil. I'm going to grab a 5 8 inch bowl gouge, 900 RPM, mask and face shield on. And I forgot to mention that this piece comes to us from Jim in Pennsylvania. And he said, when you cut into it, you'll know why they call it pepper wood. And I remember that. I remember what this smells like. It smells just like pepper. As soon as you cut into it, it's, it's quite a strong smell. I also remember that piece was pretty punky, or at least quite soft. Okay, we're fully round. I'm going to go sharpen it up and see if I can't get the cleanest cut of all. And we're going to move to the bottom and set up a tenon or a recess, I don't know, and get it flattened off. Okay, bottom's nice and flat. I think we're going to do a recess. Maybe I've been on a recess kick lately, I'm not sure. People ask me all the time, why don't you do more recesses?
Now I'm going to use my recess tool, put a dovetail on the edge of this. good. Now I want to work on a little base for this to set on, a little platform here. And the recess is deeper than it needs to be, so I'm going to use some of that. Pretty good. So far this one's finishing up a little smoother than that first one I did. That had all sorts of holes in it actually from uh, being soft wood and tearing out. Okay, time for sanding. Oh, that's better. I'm going to start the sanding with my Sandoflex at 180 grit. This bark is rough, but it's pretty soft, so 180 grit is going to do, and that's as fine as I'll go on the bark. And when I'm done with that, I'll switch to my 2-inch disc starting at 80 grit. I'll have the lathe spinning in reverse at 360 RPM, and I'll show you what both of those look like as soon as I get my mask on. I know you can't see it, but that really makes it look this orange color. So I'll be doing both of those things for a little while. I'll bring you back when it's time to put some sanding sealer on there. See you in a bit. I cannot believe the huge difference between this piece and the other one I did. The other half of this was just, it tore out because it was so soft. I guess I thought it was punky. Maybe it was punky, I don't know. But it was soft as all get out. And there were large voids in the, in the grain of the wood. And this is not like that at all. I wonder if it has anything to do with, you know, the north side of the tree or the south side of the tree getting the sunshine or not, or hard to know. But interesting, nevertheless. This just sanded up so silky smooth. Oh, there's even a little bit of chatoyance right here. This is sanding sealer, shellac-based sanding sealer. And then I'll apply shellac over this. I usually do two coats of each. I expected to do two or three coats of sealer on this piece, but... Maybe two is going to do it easily. And then of course I have to brush the bark. So I've got some sanding sealer in this little can. And this makes quite a little bit of difference. And I'm just going to go over here about an inch or so. 
I'll bring you back here in a little bit and we will uh, start working on the inside. See you in a bit. Turn the piece around then have the chuck jaws expanded into the recess. We're going to be turning at 1230 RPM, 5 inch bowl gouge, mask and face shield on. What do you think? Too much bark? Too much thickness here? Just right? What do you think? A little bit less, huh? Okay. I can do that. That better? Still too much? No? Just right? Okay. You're the boss. I'm a little bit thinner down here than I am up here, so I am going to take off just a little bit more, about an inch down or so. I think that probably did it. Let's get rid of some of this middle part here that's driving us crazy. And then we'll check our bottom thickness. I'm sure we've got a ways to go. Quite a ways. Yep, got about an inch right now. I think that's it. Yep, quarter inch. The sides are about three eighths here, quarter inch in the bottom. I don't really want to lose any more bark than we have. It's, it's so exceptional, that orange color. So I'm happy. Time for sanding. I'm starting at 80 grit on my 2 inch disc. I've got the lathe spinning at 350 RPM. I'm alternating between forward and reverse. I'm going to go ahead and put the finish on. You saw me put it on the bottom and I'll bring you back here in a little bit. We'll take a good look at this thing sitting upright. It's going to be cool. 
See you in a bit. Before we wrap this up, I want to say that uh, I get asked about what I do between coats of sealer and finish. What do I do? How do I smooth them? I used to show that all the time. It's in several of my older videos. I probably haven't shown it for maybe, I don't know, maybe a year. But I finally just made a video of what I do. It's a real short video. I think it's less than three minutes. And I'll try and put a link to that in the upper right hand corner of your screen about now. And you can take a look at that to see how I smooth between coats and after the final coat of finish. Be sure you stick around to the end of the video so you can see the before and after shots of this piece. If you'd share the video, I'd really appreciate that. Thank you so much. This is an interesting piece of wood, and I've got several things to say about it. First of all, it's, in my opinion, perfect. It's, it's uh, flawless. <laughs> Well, that's one of the things I have to say about it. It's flawless as far as anything I could have possibly done to it. And there's something to see in here. Not necessarily there, although, although I'm seeing it now when I'm looking in the viewfinder. The bark is kind of like the uh, cork oak that I turned. It's kind of soft, but it's orange. And you just don't see that an awful lot. And I, I really like it a lot. And then the heartwood there is kind of orangish color. Pretty cool. Do you see anything when you look at that that way? See, I see an eagle's head. And here's his beak over here. Right here is his beak right at the end. But when you turn it the other way, it's even more obvious to me what it is. Just, what do you see there? A genie's lamp. Just rub that sucker and all your dreams will come true. If only it were so. Now, those are interesting things. Another interesting thing is, just before I took this off the lathe, I was inspecting it to make sure it was perfect. And, and you see that line? Can you see that line? Yeah, you can see it there. See that line? It's like a straight, straight line. It's like a cut. Like somebody laid a ruler on there and made a cut with a razor blade. And I thought, well, what could I possibly have done to cause that? Because, of course, I turned this, so it's not anything that should have been there after I turned it. But there it is, a, a, a nice straight line, and I've been puzzling myself how I could possibly have caused that. And then while it was on the lathe, I turned it around. And there it is again different spot. The other one's right here in the middle. This one's off to the side. A nice straight line. I assure you I did not take a razor blade to this thing. It hasn't been near any tools that could have caused that. You can't really feel it, so it's in the grain. You know, it's been turned, it's been sanded, it's been finished, and yet there it is. One on that side, one on that side. I don't know. So then, well, I'm puzzling that. What could I have done to cause it? I dropped it. I dropped the dang thing right on the concrete because it's, it's so light and so slippery. And I picked it up and I thought, oh my gosh, what have I done? And I haven't done anything. There's no, it, it landed on the bottom. Well, it, it kind of rocked around. So it's, it's been all, all around and there's no damage. So that was lucky. That was the, uh, the genie coming to my rescue, I guess. Anyway, you see the genie lamp? You do. You see it. Clear as day. You see the eagle head? I do. I see him right there. I really like it. I hope you like it. It was a lot of fun to make, a lot of fun to turn. It's so much higher quality than the other half of this log. It's great. Okay, this way. This way I see an eagle kind of sitting on a branch. Can you see him? Here's his shoulder right here, shoulder right here, and over here, and then here's his, he's got his head turned sideways. You see the eagle that way? Thank you, Jim in Pennsylvania, for sending this along for all to enjoy. Pepperwood. If you like this video, thumbs up, please. I'd sure appreciate it. If you're a subscriber, thank you very kindly. I truly appreciate that. If you're not a subscriber, you might consider becoming one. I put out regular videos about one a week and I'd like to keep in touch. An easy way to subscribe is just click my picture you see there near the end of the video. Your comments are always welcome and I love reading them. So for now, this is Phil, Shady Acres Woodshop, signing off.